Good evening. Come on. Good evening. Good evening. We sing this is the most wonderful time of the year. So there should be joy and happiness and peace reigning in our hearts. So I just want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a blessed uh, week that is uh, looking forward to. And I want to bring that from our family and from my church. And this is an honor to be here. And I want to thank Pastor Paul for his kindness and this beautiful invitation to come and to be here with all of you. And I'll be here on Sunday too to be with all of you. So I'm so blessed to be here. And God bless these young people, the children with gifts and talents. And they were able to um, perform that before us. And they worked hard, maybe for a month. They had teachers and may God bless them for their faithfulness. God uses little children for his praise and for his honor. And so it is a blessing to see our children growing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and walking in his footsteps. So all glory goes to God. This beautiful evening, I would like to talk to you about the gift of God's love or the gift of God's love. And there's a statement um, that we are going to read together this evening. And I hope they are going to project that over the screen. So we are going to read that together. Here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you haven't read with me, let's read one more time. Let's read loudly. Okay? Let's read loudly. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we come in the name of Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, we thank You for this evening. Lord, we thank You for bringing us together. We thank you for your faithfulness. You kept our family safe and sound. All glory at your feet. As we come and celebrate and remember what you have done for us by sending your son Jesus into this world. We thank you for that love. We thank you for this gift. That's all we need during this Christmas. I pray that you would go before us, prepare the way, speak to our hearts. May we understand the truth of God and we pray that you would be exalted in our midst. May you be increased and all praises to you in Christ Jesus name we pray. Amen. I heard a story about the costly gift of love. There was a woman lying on the ground and in her arms she held a tiny little baby and a passerby so and he had a cooked sweet potato in his hand and he handed that over to her outstretched arm asking for arms that day and he was wondering in his heart whether she would live until that morning because her strength was almost gone but her tired eyes acknowledged that gracious gift from this stranger the sweet potato would be of little help but that was all he had and he gave that to her. What did she do? She took a bite of that sweet potato and she chewed it carefully. Then placing her mouth over her little baby's mouth, she forced that soft warm foot from her mouth into the baby's tiny throat. Although the mother was starving, she used the entire sweet potato to keep her baby alive. Exhausted from her effort, she dropped her head on the ground and closed her eyes and in a few minutes, the baby was asleep. But that night, the mother's heart stopped, but her little baby lived. We see this mother's gift of love and that was an outstanding love. It was a costly love. Why? It cost her life. God gave his costly gift to each one of us.
to this world, to the world of people across this globe. It costs God everything. And we know love is costly, but we must all tell the world at any cost this gift. We must share with them this gift of love. Such a love is costly. It costs parents to take care of their children. Lots of sacrifices are involved. It costs us to do anything in the name of love. We know that missionaries, missionary doctors, missionary hospitals and schools are established out of love. It costs somebody something. And this evening, my heart is this one. As I share, I want you to ponder. I want you to think. I want you to understand and receive this gift of love and what this gift of love can produce to each one of us. I have simple four thoughts for you. And the first one is the gift of love produces the message of love. The gift of love produces the message of love. When we all receive a gift, we are blessed by the thought behind it. There is a message behind that gift by that giver. Also, when someone blesses you, they are meeting your need or at times meeting your want. And they understand what it means to you. There is a story in the Bible about a woman. One day Jesus was in a house and this woman came to see Jesus. She was hated by all. No one regarded her. But she knew that Jesus was full of love. So he came, sorry, she came to Jesus as he was at the house of a, a, uh, of a religious leader named Simon. And she brought a gift to bless Jesus. We know when we go to the mall during Christmas season and Thanksgiving season, it's, uh, we get off, right? Lots of discounts. So we go and buy expensive perfumes or cologne. So this woman brought to Jesus what was a costly perfume and she wanted to bless Jesus. So what did she do? She poured that perfume on Jesus' feet and she wiped it with her hair. Sorry, hair. What was she conveying? She was conveying her gift of love to Jesus. She wanted to honor the Lord with whatever she had. That's all she had. When God blessed us with Jesus, He conveyed His love for each one of us. And the need of deliverance, delivering each one of us from sin and from death, it surpassed all human expectations. How can such a person die for us? And what it cost Him? There's a statement also we read in the Bible that God demonstrated His love for each one of us. Not only in sending Jesus to us, but also we see Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Jesus is the gift of love. There's a message passed on to us through Jesus. Why we remember it was all for the sake of love. Whenever we think about Jesus, we think about his love. The love for humanity. That Jesus loves, that, that he loved you. He loved me, each one of us. There's a new statistic statistics that came out this uh, week and it says 68 percent of the westerners think that that we need to remember the giving of Jesus during Christmas it was a surprising uh, report 68 percent of the people of this country believe that we need to remember and honor the gift of Jesus to humanity this message of love will last for eternity. God's gift is Jesus to us, full of love. You will be captivated by anyone who shows love to you. You don't want to walk or talk to a person who doesn't show love. Jesus is full of love. It's all because of love he came to this world. And if you don't understand who Jesus is, I'm trying my best to introduce Jesus to you. Jesus loves you so much. He came to this world to die for you. He wanted to show you through his action. That is the message of love that we see. The message of love always stays with us. It refreshes us. It goes beyond our understanding. It can captivate our hearts. 
Whatever we do, when it is given in love, it is attractive. Such gifts will re reveal God's heart to others. So this Christmas, as you give gifts, don't give out of compulsion. Don't give because it is expected of you in a family gatherings. But think for a moment, Jesus gave all for you. And out of love that he did it. And so our gifts must be with the full of love. We are not talking about costly gifts. Nobody cares about how much it costs, but the thought and the message that comes along with it. That you thought about somebody. You took time to go and get that gift. You made some sacrifices. You didn't have enough, but you thought about someone. Remember, your gift should produce a message of love. And that is what we see in that verse that we all read together. For God so loved this world. That one statement is enough for us to ponder and wait on the Lord tonight. God so much loved this world. He passed a message to each one of us. The second thought I would like to bring to your attention is not only the gift of God produces the message of love, the gift of God also produces the motive of love. People have different ways of evaluating a gift. For some, when they receive a gift, they look at the value of that gift. Some will look at the size of that gift, just like our little children. They will look at each other, Mom, why did you give him the best gift? His gift is big. Mine is small. How much that cost? Sometimes we adults also get into that habit. We look at each other, oh, I got a $10 Starbucks gift card, and he got something bigger than that. And that's our human tendency. And we need to get out of that. And we need to value the motive behind it. Which is the right way to receive a gift. Thank you. And that thankfulness should come from the depths of our heart. The heart motive of the giver should be the value to the receiver. Should be of value to the receiver. I heard a beautiful story on the radio recently. On our side of the town in Orange County, we have a channel known as 95.9, The Fish. So this story was shared in that uh, radio program. It talks about some time ago, a man punished his three-year-old little daughter for wasting a roll of gold wrapping paper. Money was tied to this family and he became infuriated when the child tried to decorate a box to put under the Christmas tree. Nevertheless, the little girl brought the gift to her father on, the, on Christmas Eve and gave it to him. And he was so embarrassed as he was receiving the gift by his earlier conversation and his sorry overreaction to her. But his anger flared once again as he opened the gift. He yelled at her by telling these statements that, that there must be something inside this box. You just basically gave me an empty box and you wasted my golden wrapping papers. And the little girl looked at her daddy and said, oh daddy, it is not empty. I blew my kisses into that box. I blew my kisses into that box. And I wrapped it with the full of love, all for you, Daddy. This story teaches that even though this was an empty box, there was a beautiful motive behind that gift. It was priceless. That little baby thought that much. That is amazing. Sometimes pure motives like this little baby's may not measure up to the material expectations of our modern mind. We all have phones. In a year, we will be changing that. We always want something new because our coworker has the best one, and so I need to have the best one. My sibling has the latest phone, so I must have that one. We are always after something new. We want the best cars out there. That is our material mindset, and we need to come out of that. It is not about what we have but it is what we have in our hearts. The motive behind everything that we do. This is exactly what we see in the world. So we should not be like that. 
Jesus said, I called you out of this world. I called you out of the world to follow my love. If you look into the New Testament, in the book of the Bible, when God gave Jesus to this world, not to anyone particular, not to any particular nation or tribe or tongue, God gave Jesus to this whole world, to everyone equally. But we know that when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which is Israel, the Jewish leaders, I'm talking about Jewish religious leaders, the fanatic religious leaders, they despised Jesus, not knowing his worth. They did not regard the ancient prophecies that were given about Jesus' coming. Even Magi, they, when they arrived from the east, they discussed the birth of the newborn king of the Jews with the, a pagan king known as King Herod. And still they ignored Jesus. They had no desire to understand this prophecy that was given many, many years ago. Later, when they evaluated the birth of Jesus, they only saw poverty in Jesus. They saw suffering in Jesus. They look for glory, they look for majesty, they look for fame and royalty, but all they saw in Jesus was poverty and suffering. So what did they do? They despised Jesus. They disregarded Jesus. Their pride and selfishness took over them and that did not allow them to see the heart of God. That can happen to us, either materialism, materialism or our individualism or anything, pride and arrogance or unwillingness to have an open heart to understand the love of God. We don't want to become like the Jewish religious leaders during that time. God was, God's heart was filled with love for us. Today there are a lot of people who are after money. There are a lot of people who are after power and fame and status. And sometimes we Christians also fall into that trap. That is the trap of the world. That is the trap of the devil, which we have no part of. We have been called out from that. We are simply to love Jesus and follow his footsteps. Sometimes I don't want to call myself a Christian. I simply say, I am a follower of Jesus. I am simply following Jesus. Because sometimes religiousness comes into our lives. I don't want to be a religious person. I hope you are not a religious person tonight. You need to have a relationship with Jesus and simply follow Jesus because he's full of love and forgiveness and compassion. When Jesus was on this earth, as soon as he saw people, the Bible says, we read this in the Bible, he was moved with compassion. So tonight we can evaluate whether you are with Jesus or you haven't invited Jesus to come into your heart. Am I, what kind of a life am I leading tonight? I was the same way until the age of 12. At the age of 12, someone came and shared with me this message of love. The motive of Jesus' love that he loved you so much. Even before you were born in your mother's womb, he saw you. When you were born into your mother's womb, he fearfully and wonderfully created you. When someone shared the motive of God's love to me, I was captivated by that. I hope this evening, someone here will be captivated by the love of God that he has for you. This is the precious gift from heaven. And this is the best gift you can have during this season. Yes, we are having some expectations, right? If you have a big group of siblings, grandparents or parents, friends, you're expecting I may get at least four or five gifts. And you're praying, Lord, they may give this one, they may give this one and this one. But the best gift you can have is God's love for you. You just simply receive it. It's been given. It's been given. Do you evaluate a gift by its price? No, not at all. At least from this Christmas onwards, you should not do that. Its size? No, you shouldn't do that. But the pure motive of love behind it. So let's remember, God's gift of love produces a great message. 
God's gift of love produces a great motive because God wants to touch your heart through his love. That's it. God simply wants your heart. He doesn't want anything else because he is the giver of all things. He is here to give. So I hope you are captivated by that great love through Jesus. The third thought I have, we're almost done. Two more to go. God's gift of love also produces the mission of love. The mission of God's love is his love in action. Before we look into this, we need to know God's love in action, that action that took place while we were far away from him. For 12 years, I was far away from him. Into the world, college life, and walking away from everything, not knowing the action that God had toward me, that his love was filled with action. That is why I read that verse to you from John. That's a passage in the Bible, those who are not familiar with, one of the book named Book of John in chapter 3, verse 16. We read that God so loved the world, love in action. God so much loved this world. I like it when our children, Sunday school children, pronounce that state, statement. They will say, God so loved this world. So much beyond our expectation. Or in better term, it's, it's better to say this way, the unending love of God. Even though this is a small verse in the Bible, it is a powerful verse. It portrays the immeasurable love of God and the most highest great love for us. He lavishly loved us, abundantly poured that upon us, upon this unholy world. An unknown brother, author wrote this way at court, the perfect love of God, sorry, the perfect love of the righteous God given to an imperfect world. The pardoning love of a merciful God given to a condemned world. The reclaiming love of God of reconciliation given to a decaying world. The gracious love of God given to a world that is in disgrace. End quote. I am so blessed to know this love. I am so blessed to know the message behind it. The motive behind it. And the action, the mission that he took in order to captivate my heart. His love came into my life. When I was an enemy of God, when I stood against Him, when I walked away from Him, when I ignored Him, when I kept it for tomorrow. You know, sometimes we say we are procrastinators by nature, right? If someone asks you, can you do this today? We'll say, no, tomorrow I'll take care of it. May you do the same today. Please allow the love of God to come into your heart. All you need to do is simply ask, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this amazing love. I never heard about it. That you loved me even before I was born into my mother's womb. And also the preacher just said, you wonderfully and fearfully created me. And I want to accept this love into my heart. Would you please do that today? Would you please allow... God to come into your heart would you please accept this love we are, I'm not talking about any religion because I said I'm against that so you must be against that too we are talking about a relationship we love to make relationship with others we want to have a relationship with others and that's how we make friendship so having a relationship with God Almighty you become the friend of God the mission of love is that we must act in love in spite of the recipient's quality and qualifications. And that is the purpose and the goal of love. See, love does not need any proof, right? If you want to love someone, you simply what? Love them. If your love does not serve others, then it is not the mission of love. A missionary's life is love in action. One of our family friend was a, a missionary doctor in Afghanistan from Colorado. He could have made 
hundreds and thousands of dollars per year. But he sacrificed everything to serve a people in a faraway country. Several years ago, then he was captured by the Taliban. And thank God for our military, they were able to go and rescue him. Family and children and all friends like us, we all were in agony. They sacrificed it because they received this amazing love that was in action on the cross. And he also accepted that love and he wanted to exemplify to a group of people. Would you do that this Christmas time? Love that does not listen to others is not love in action. Love that does not extend a hand is not the love in action. God gave us love not because He found you and me worthy, not He found the world worthy or in good standing. He simply loved them because He is full of love. God gave because of His great love. His grace and mercy. Grace simply means unmerited favor of God. I'm not worthy of this love. But He also showed mercy toward us. Mercy means I am a recipient of God's wrath. But he chose not to do that to me. So we have love and grace and mercy from heaven. So this is the best example of heavenly giving. So the motivation behind God's actions is God's love for each one of us. As we learn that from God himself, it is always better to learn things from God Almighty. And we know that he did not do that out of compulsion. He did not expect that anything from us or we did not expect that from him. But he simply loved us. May the love of God be the motivation in our hearts to give our time for others. May the love of God be the motivation to give your energy for others. Someone is in need of help. Someone is moving. Someone needs a hand inside the bus or train or on the road. God's love should move your heart in action. May the love of God motivate you and show that in action in your service to God. There's a beautiful song that, that our children sing. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. But I like the last line. It says, because he first loved me. Because he first loved me. That is amazing. That is the one thing that attracted me when someone told me that God loves you first. And he's, he's standing there with an open arms wide. I hope you remember there's a beautiful story in the Bible known as the prodigal son and the father. You know the story. The prodigal's father was waiting for many days for his son to return home. And that is the picture of God Almighty waiting to receive us. There's a great man named John Oxham, a prolific English novelist and poet, wrote about the goal of love. And he wrote this way, I quote, Love endlessly gives. Love forgives. Love outlives. Love forever stands with open hands. And while love lives in our heart, it gives, for this is love's prerogative, to give and to give and to give. And so let's remember the mission of love is love in action. And that was through Jesus Christ our Lord. And last thought, and I know you are in relief. We are here in the fourth point. The gift of love is, has also a meaning behind it. We saw the motive, we saw the message, we saw the mission. There's also meaning behind this love. There should be meaning in our love when we give gifts to others. There should be meaning. The gift of God has meaning. Gift of God has value. Gift of God has significance and quality behind it. He gave us one and only sin. I hope you remember that verse on the screen, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Simply means from the Greek language we get the best translation, one of a kind. That's the only thing he had and he gave that to us, to this world. The final result of this indescribable gift from heaven will be seen in heaven. 
So the meaning of God's love gift should change our thinking today and we should make a decision today and this should be the decision. If God gave me his best and I want to give my best back to him. If God gave me his best, I want to give my best to him. What's that you can do for God? And I believe all God wants from you 